hey what's up guys welcome back you're watching for today so we got yet another update for extended xt 7.5 for nothing phone one for first review video of this rom we didn't got the good response it didn't even reach it to 1k views so we requesting all of you to please support our channel because we are creating regular update videos for all the custom rom for nothing phone one and today we are going to review this new update we will see all the new changes we got in this update but wait it's not over we are now starting the gaming review for performance and features available in the ROM and we will find out which will be the best custom ROM for nothing phone one within upcoming days. We have started this new approach with the extended XT update. At last we shown the previous and present bugs in the ROM so it will be the complete analysis of new update. So please do like and share this video, subscribe to the channel, press the bell icon for the notifications of our upcoming content. Now without further ado, let's get started. On a new adventure Let's first check out the about phone. This is the same Android 13 build. Only extended ST version is released as 7.5. Previous first build we tested was on 5.0. Security patch is of May 2023. Old build was on February security patches. Thanks to developer Mukesh for maintaining this build. Kernel version is 5.4.231. It's the same as old build. So let's start with the review of all the new changes done by the developer. Some of them are very interesting and useful, so watch this carefully. First one is the developers added the new settings to a theme in the extended customizations. Here under the theme room, we guess the this toggle called as the settings dashboard style, which will theme your settings like the card, as you can check this on the screen. Under the QS panel customizations, developer has added the new QS header images. Here we can add any image manually by selecting any pictures from the gallery. Or we get some presets of header images that can be changed to a slider setting available. These are some header images we get here. Developers has optimized the glass blur effect for the QS panel. You can change this effect using the QS panel transference slider. Developers has added the new fingerprint unlock animation from Nothing OS in this ROM, which looks cool. We can change it to any animation if you want using some under display fingerprint animations. Under the QS panel, we get the new brightness slider styles. These are giving some amazing looks to your QS panel. Here is a preview for some of these we get here. Next under the notification setting we get the key lab button toggle. This will enable the key lab button for notifications in the notification panel when you long press on any notification. This will force stop the application but this will not properly work for now. It kills the application but we didn't get the proper notification of app killing. Next developer has added the pause app feature. To pause the application just long press any application in the app drawer. There in a pop-up menu gets the new pause button after tapping it, apps goes in a pause mode and icons of the pause application changes to the grade of color. If you want to unpause the application, tap on it and it will again ask to unpause the application, just accept the prompt. This is really helpful for pausing for some battery draining application and helps to save more battery. Next developer has added the data switch tile under the quiz panel to switch between the dual SIM networks. Next interesting feature we get here is to option to disable the developer's mode detection by some applications like New State Gaming and ICICF Bank etc. Under the extras option of the extended setting we get this hide developer status option. Just check mark the application which detects the developer or USB debugging enabled in the setting. But it's not working properly now even after enabling this New State mobile game app is detecting the developer status and not working. Now before testing the gaming performance, we will do the Geekbench 6 testing. ROM is fluid, smooth, but there is one issue that I will discuss under the bug section of the video. ROM has the performance modes option under the battery setting. We will do the first round of the Geekbench without the performance mode. Here for CPU, we got the score of 9224 and 2752 for single and multi-core respectively, which is a good score but not the best as compared to the previous custom ROMs we tested. 
Next for the GPU performance on the OpenGL graphics API we got the score of 2050 and for Hulkan graphics API we got the score of 2278. Now let's enable the performance mode and let's see if any performance improvement will happen or not. With the performance mode on for the CPU we got the score of 922 and 2715. Both the performance and the non-performance mode score same same here. For OpenGL graphics API we got the score of 2055 and for Vulkan graphics we got the score of 2390. So only Vulkan graphics score has improved here. Both the performance mode and non-performance mode didn't have much difference so current build has the same performance like old build. It's smooth but it has one issue that we'll discuss under the bug section. Next we will start with the gaming test for this update. We will check the touch sampling rate and mods added by the developers for the better gaming performance and better interference free gaming experience. We will test it with the real life gaming experience of the ROM. Under the extra setting of extended customizations we guess the game space like other highly customizable ROMs. Here we guess the lots of options to improve your gaming experience. By using the add button we can add any application manually in the gaming mode. Here under the gear icon setting we can enable the different modes like the standard, performance and battery. Even we can choose the new graphics driver like Angus instead of OpenGL drivers. This is experimental feature it may cause some graphical issues. Before running the game let's first check out the screen touch sampling rate. App link is given under the video description. Install the application, open it and just move your finger on the screen and we get the screen touch sampling rate on the right side. It's ranging between 250 to 300. This is very good value so it may definitely help to improve the touch responsiveness in the games. Under the extra setting of the extended setting we also guess one to call call as the unlock higher FPS in the games. It's intended to apply the higher FPS in the games. We enable the show FPS option using the developer setting. In the QS panel we get the screen FPS control tile. Here you can switch between the 60, 90 and 120 Hz refresh rate. Here we choose the 120 Hz and it's maintaining the 120 Hz screen refresh rate except the camera application. Now let's play the BGM ad to test is it all setting really works or not. After opening the gaming application we get the game space overlay at the corner by using this you can easily switch between the games modes like the performance, battery etc. Who gets the FPS card which helps to show the real time game FPS. Except this who gets the log gesture, stay awake and notification card which helps to interference free gaming experience. While playing the game screen FPS remained constantly on 120Hz but game space FPS meter is fluctuating a lot. Its range are between 40 to 60 constantly not more than that. Gameplay was extremely smooth with very good stress responsiveness. Overall I can say the gaming in this ROM is decent but some features like unlock higher FPS is not working. Definitely you can say this ROM is gaming hub for the game lovers. Finally let's discuss the last timestamp of the video that is the bugs and the missing features. As usual DRM info showing the security as L3. So no HDR content streaming is available for the Netflix and Amazon Prime. I don't want to tell this issue every time but for newcomers it's necessary to tell. Let's check out the old camera bug solved or not in this build. Video shooting was not working in the old build but now it's completely fixed. All the 4K 180p video shootings are working good. But the slow motion video shooting not working it shows the video but recorded videos not getting saved in the memory. Next issue is for the portrait photos. Main camera takes the picture but they didn't have any portrait blur effect. Front selfie camera portrait shots not getting saved in the gallery. Glyph flashlight is not working for video shooting but you guess the glyph torch in the QS panel which can be used as a glyph flash for camera shooting. Camcorder light on the back of the phone didn't work while shooting the videos. These are some issues still present in the camera. Now comes the major issue that I face that is some random lag while using the phone. Sometimes screen didn't respond while it's being inactive for a second. It's didn't face in the game but I got this issue similar while using this QS panel editing tile setting as you can check on the screen. Except there's no any major issue I found. In the missing features developer still didn't added the reverse wireless charging feature till the date it's only available for the Pixis and the paranoid android ROM. So this is all about the new update of Xtender XT except some camera bugs and the short lags. Nothing to worry once they got fixed this ROM will be one of the best performing and top contender of gaming ROMs. So stay tuned for other videos there we will do some gaming tests and finally after some days I will release the winner for the best gaming ROM for nothing for one. 
that's it for today guys hope you liked my work then please do like and share this video subscribe to channel press the bell icon for the notifications of our upcoming content thanks for watching see you next time take care bye bye